He's not sound. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's in his foot. In his foot? Hmm. Hey, you! Who, me? Yeah, you! What? You look like you know something about horses' feet. I watched a YouTube video about it once. Perfect. You're hired. G'day guys, but in all seriousness, being able to figure out if there's a source of pain in your horse's foot and knowing whether to call your vet or your farrier is an important skill that every horse owner should have. Today, I got my mate Elliot Jennings who's a certified journeyman farrier with tons of experience working on international performance horses. He's going to be here to help me out. So Elliot, my first question for you is, if you suspect that something's going on in your horse's foot, what's the best way of being able to figure that out or narrow it down? So we don't always have hoof testers, but we do have these. And we can feel the horse's pulse and that will give us a really good idea of where the pain is, if it's in the foot or if it's somewhere else. What about hoof testers, mate? Like what about looking for heat? Looking for heat, that's not, that's not a very effective way. Because if a horse has been standing out in the sun, one foot in the sun, one foot in the shade, sometimes it's different to ascertain like, is this one hot, is this one cool? The pulse, always, it never lies. Right. All right, can, can you show us how to find a pulse, mate? Love to. So, Dom, I've drawn three lines on this horse. The outer two lines are an approximation of where you should be feeling. The middle line is exactly where I found the pulse. So I'm going to put my finger, my thumb right over there. The amount of pressure you need is the amount of pressure it would take to depress a straw on a table. OK. And so, once I've found the pulse, which I think I have, like, what am I, what am I feeling? Like, is it different to, like, say, the pulse you have on your, on your own, under your chin, or? No, this is a totally different pulse. This is a pulse, if the horse is lame, you always want to try to feel the, the leg. Let's just assume that this one is the lame foot. And you want to feel the foot first to get a baseline. Right, so you don't suspect he's lame in this no, one, so you check so it So then I'll first. come over here, that'll be my baseline, and then if, if the pulse is pronounced, it will jump out on me straight away. Right, okay, that makes sense. Now, to get a baseline on your horse, you're gonna need to put your horse in a wash rack and you're gonna, at rest, and you're gonna wanna feel his pulse. And get a feel for how much, how much pressure and what the frequency is. And then, what I want you to do is I want you to go out after a jump session, and I want you to take the pulse after some exercise and get a feel for that. That will be a slightly elevated pulse. Right. And then that will give you a good idea to if your horse is laying in one foot, that will give you an idea of what an elevated pulse will be. Okay, that makes sense. So let's say that you do feel that the pulse is elevated, it feels like it's throbbing as opposed to normal. What could be a cause of that? Like what, what would, could the problem be? Anything from heel soreness to a bruise to an abscess to laminitis. Obviously, if it's something like laminitis, it's going to be a very elevated, pronounced pulse. But if we're just dealing with an abscess, it's going to be, it's going to be quite extreme compared to normal. Right, OK. And so if it was an abscess, if we did suspect that, now what? I think if you can't get a hold of your farrier, I think it's time to pull the shoe. All right, OK. We'll get on to that next. But first, let's head to a Shramo shout out. Today's Shramo shout out is a very special one and it goes to the Fletcher Street Urban Riding Club located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Fletcher Street Urban Riding Club has been part of the Philly community for over 100 years. Located in an area that really struggles with unemployment and drugs, this program has saved countless kids by teaching them the importance of caring for something. And these guys could really use our help. Check out their website here and also think about making a donation. It really could use a helping hand right now. I'd really appreciate it. All right, guys, back to the action. Welcome back, guys. All right, Elliot, so we were talking about maybe we've diagnosed something or we're in a situation where we need to get the shoe off and the farrier can't get there, so we're going to take it off. I'm going to be honest, mate. I know I'm supposed to have a bunch of farrier tools in my trailer and my barn, but I don't. 
and this seems a little daunting to me. So how do we go about doing this? Well, what you're used to seeing farriers pull off with is one of these. Right. A set of pull-offs. And how this works is you get it underneath the shoe and you kind of jerk it off yeah. piecemeal as you go forward. Right. But what that does is it puts pressure on the sole. And sometimes you get a horse giving you some of this. And if you only get half the shoe off, you're in a situation where the horse might rear up, step on a clip, nails, you name it. So my recommendation is you use a pair of these. These are crease nail pullers. They're really handy and they do a sweet job. I'll show you how to use them. Okay. So you take, they've got the teeth of the jaw, you run them kind of backhoe style underneath the nail until, and you give it a squeeze, you'll see the nail head just pop up right. and you give it a swift, you have to be confident, a swift forward jerk. One nail at a time. Right, and this looks good because it's uh, the shoes, and he's hardly jerking, and the shoe's not really moving, and you look like you've got a bit more control over it. Right, and if he does jerk, it's in a relatively safe situation here. Right. If he slams his foot down. So again, backhoe style underneath, and a swift jerk forward. And it's off. Shoes off. That looks actually much easier than I thought. All right. And there's very minimal damage to the foot. With a pair of pull-offs, you can often end up pulling chunks of foot away, and that's, not, that's never helpful. And a pair of crease nail pullers will cost you about $50 to $80, and they'll last you your whole lifetime with horses. Right. And, or if you've got a real friendly farrier who's got an old rusty pair, he might just give them to you. And he'll be so happy that you were able to take care of business when he wasn't there. When he wasn't there. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Well, now that the shoe's off, if we suspected an abscess, you know, we've already done an episode on how to pack the hoof, so that would be our next step here until the farrier was to be able to come out and take care of it. All right, well, that's definitely a lot easier than I thought. And uh, like Elliot said, crease nail pullers, ask your farrier about it or ask if he can get a hold of a set for you. It might make your life a lot easier. We've covered finding the pulse to see if there's a problem in the foot. We know how to locate it, what we're looking for. We know how to take a shoe off. So the next time you run into a bit of strife with your horse's foot, you'll know what to do. Until next week, see ya.